is glad you could join me digitally. Sorry I couldn't be there in the classroom, but hopefully this will be fun to do something new and different um, for your lesson. And the nice thing is you get a nice little close-up version of what I'm doing here. You don't have to look over anybody's shoulder. So, all right. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that program about uh, Chuck Close. He's quite an inspiration to me, and hopefully you found him to be very inspirational too. Um, I think it's amazing that he does what he does uh, with his disabilities. So. so when we go to do your project, you're going to have a little bigger paper than I do. Um, I have to do a little short, shortened version for you here. So Pick an image that you like that's going to be very colorful. The more colors you have in your picture, the prettier your picture is going to be and the easier it is going to be also. So make sure you choose a subject matter that's going to be nice and colorful. All right. I already drew out my image. Um, also choose an image that is going to be large in scale. You don't want tiny little things. If you have things that are any smaller, now I do have some jimmies here or sprinkles, depends on where you come from, what you call it. <laughs> um, you don't want things that are smaller than the size of your pencil sharpener um, and you'll see why in just a moment. So make sure nice and big objects, um, definitely helpful. Okay, next we need to make a grid along our paper just like Chuck Close does on his mural that he was doing or his great big painting. <clears throat> so take a ruler. In this case I have a T-square which is nice because you can put along your edge. All right. And you're going to use the width of your ruler each time you make a line. So spread out your hand when you're holding your ruler like this. It will keep it from moving. Okay. Right. Now if you have a regular ruler like this, it's going to be a little bit, a little bit harder. Um, just make sure that each time you're going to have to double check before you do a line. Make sure it is even with the top of your paper. If it starts to go crooked, your every all the lines afterwards are going to be crooked. So you have to really take your time making your grid to make sure it's nice and straight. Now this unfortunately has a rounded edge to it. Um, it's a little easier if you have a ruler that has a nice straight edge because then you can line it up with this side of the paper and with this side of the paper before you draw your line. And once again, hold it tight so it doesn't move on you. Spread out your fingers and then draw your line across. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use my T-square just because it's easier. Okay, once again, the width of the ruler Line it up with the next line, being very careful. Hold it tight. And I'm going to continue that all the way down. Now you're probably going to end up with just a little bit left over at the end. Um, that's not quite the right size, and that's okay. Just don't worry about that. All right, now I'm going to do up and down. Same thing, line it up with your side and trace your ruler all the way down. Now I have my gridded picture. All right, next you need to think of a bunch of different line designs. So I came up with a bunch of different line designs. I would say come up with six different ones. If you want to use the ones I came up with, that's perfectly fine. And then um, you also need to have a light and a dark version of all the colors that you're going to use in this lesson. For example, I have <clears throat> the polka dots here. I did in a very light blue and a medium blue. And then as you can see, when you go to do your coloring, you can switch it up. So background can switch a color from the foreground. 
okay? So um, definitely do that to give it some interest. Now be careful when you're choosing your colors because sometimes they look different. For example, I have here, this one is non-photo blue and this one is electric blue, okay? They look like a light and dark version, but when you go to use them, there isn't enough contrast between the two like you see here in this example. Okay, so test out your colors on the back of your paper. You can see here I already tested some grays. So test it out lightly. Make sure that there's enough of a difference or a contrast between the two. Now when you've chosen your colors, here's something that's very helpful is write down the name of the colors you're using on the back of your paper. Um, the reason is because this is going to take you a while to do and to try to find the exact color you used before can be a little tricky. It, sometimes it'll appear like that's the color you used and it wasn't. So if you write down the names of your colors and the combinations, um, that will be helpful when you come back to your project. Okay, we're going to go back to the picture here. All right, now I need to plan out the colors that I'm going to do. I think for example, my cupcake, I am going to do mint green for the frosting. I'm going to do chocolate for the cupcake part. I'm sorry if I'm making y'all hungry. And I think I'm gonna do maybe purple for the wrapper. And this is a glass of milk. So that's going to be white. So I'm going to show you what to do if you do have something white in your picture and how to solve that problem. Also, I did put some little jimmies on here, and I know they're a little bit smaller than what I had said with making it about, you know, no smaller than one of the two-hold <clears throat> sharpeners. Um, sometimes there's no getting around it. For example, if you did an animal of some sort, or something and you have an eyeball and it's small. So as long as you don't have too many, um, I'll show you what to do with that issue when we get to it. So first of all, I'm going to start with one of my subject matters. Uh, I'm going to start with the frosting here. And since I'm deciding to do mint green, um, I'm going to start with that. So you're going to choose to do one square at a time. So I'm going to be doing the frosting part that's just in that square. I'm not doing this part of the background that's in the square, just the frosting part. So stick to one item at a time from your subject. Okay, so here's my frosting. And I am going to choose one of these line designs to put inside of this square. If you remember Chuck Close, how he had um, circles in each one of his squares and then when you step back you could see the picture as a whole. That's kind of what we're doing here. So I'm going to choose my stripes as my line design. So I'm just going to go ahead and make stripes inside my frosting inside this square. Now notice I'm not going past my square so I'm not continuing that line. I'll do a close up here. Okay, I'm staying within my square. So pretend like the square is your boundary. You cannot go outside your square. And you need to stay in your subject area. So frosting, not background. So my lines are going to stop right there. Now what I'm gonna do is color it in. And this is where you need two very different colors or two different shades. So I'm going to go ahead and color in now it's important to be nice and neat and to color it in all the way and stay within the lines and I have found that having a little bit of a harder look to your coloring uh, pushing a little bit harder with your colored pencils creates a really vivid picture. All right. Now 
I'm finding that these two colors are a little bit similar. When I did my test swatch, I thought they were pretty good, but maybe looking on the camera, they look a little bit similar. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is, um, especially since you probably don't have as many colored pencils as what I do, um, you might have less to choose from. So another way that you can solve the problem of not having a light and a dark version is to color a little lighter, just a little bit lighter with one of them if you cannot find anything that's going to work. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm still going to go down and f start working on my um, frosting here. Now I'm moving to another square. So I'm going to move over to my left here and I'm going to finish off the frosting that's in that square. But for each section I need to change my line design. So for example, I have this little part, so I need to change my line design. I'm going to I'm going to do stripes again like this, but I'm going to go this direction so it's different. Because you don't you want each area to stand out from the other. Okay, same thing with this part. I'm going to do something different because this is a different section, even though it's in the same square. So I'm going to do, and this is why it's so important to have two very different colors. Just some polka dots there. All right. Now this one, I cannot do polka dots again because I did polka dots right here. So I think I'll do some waves. Notice I'm coloring it in fully, not leaving any white space. All right, now I got this little section here. So sometimes they get kind of tiny. And let's see, maybe I'll do polka dots again. Now I'm going to do a circle here for this one. And you can vary the size of your line design too. You can do smaller things in smaller areas. these colors show up okay on the camera here. I'm <clears throat> looking at the screen and I'm thinking it's a little hard to see the colors compared to my compared to my blue examples here. But in front of me I can see them a little bit better. So all right so I'm gonna keep I think you kind of get the idea I'm gonna fill that in. All right now I'm gonna come over to my glass. Okay now we all know that a glass is see-through. Okay, so whatever this area is here for my glass, I'm going to have to change up. I'm just going to have to be the background color because that is the glass part. This is the milk. Okay, so this is going to be white. But we really can't have just white. So what you're going to do is just use a gray and make your patterns inside your white. So if you had a cloud or something like that, um, just use a gray along with your pattern. For example, I'm going to start with my milk here. <clears throat> I'm going to start in this section here. I'm going to do some stripes. And of course, I'm just going to leave that white. No, no sense of coloring it in white. It's already white. Now, just to kind of show you a little bit more. So here's milk, right? So I'm going to do some lines going this way. So since this is part of the milk and it's part of this square, OK, 
Okay. Now this section is different because it's a part of another square. Okay, so this one, I'm going to do my lines going up and down. And then this is part of another square. So I'm going to do polka dots. Okay. All right. Now because this is a glass, this part is see-through. Okay. So whatever I'm doing for my background color, which I think I was going to do blue, so I'm going to take my blue, and let's say I'm working on the background. Okay, um, here's a back. Here's part of the background line here. <clears throat> so this part of the background, I'm going to do some stripes there. Okay. So you can see I stopped right where that milk is here, and it's a separate part. Now you're probably wondering, well, how are you going to see the glass shape? Later on, when you're all done, we will end up taking um, a darker color, maybe darker blue, and giving it a little bit of an outline, just so that you can see. The same thing if you had an eye, or like these jimmies, what I'm going to do is break the rules just for a few items. So for the jimmies, let's say, I know you guys call them sprinkles. I'm just going to color each one of those a different color. So that is going to break the rules. Same thing with sometimes outlining an object if it needs to be outlined so that it shows up. Okay? Or an eyeball, for example, or maybe you have something else where you really need to have the item there. It's very small. Um, but try not to do too many things where you're going to have small items like that. But without the sprinkles, I don't know. It's just not as yummy of a donut to me. So, all right. Here's another thing that you can do to fix and solve a problem. Um, let's say you just don't have some of the other colors again. Or, like in this case, in front of me you can kind of see it. But I feel like there's still not enough of a contrast. So what I'm going to do is take another color... Um, another green here. It's a little bit darker and I'm just going to very lightly blend it on top. And <clears throat> thankfully these um, colored pencils can blend. So you can always change up the color. There we go. That's a little better. So if you don't have one um, and you really really want to use let's say purple for example and you don't have enough contrast between the two, even doing it light like I did here, um, you can combine another, a little bit darker color over on top. Or you could also do a light color and that lightens it up too. So put some white on top of a color and that'll make it lighter too. So that's the way you can solve that problem if you don't have enough of um, light and dark values of one color. Okay, so when you are all done, um, it is going to be pretty stunning, and I will show you some examples of student artwork that um, finished their pieces. Now, this is very time consuming, so take your time, do it in small bunches. Um, your hand will get tired, and your brain will get tired having to focus, because if you don't focus on what you're doing here, um, you could end up coloring in a wrong square and it's really hard to erase colored pencils so you really need to pay attention to what you're doing. Put on some music, you know, make it enjoyable. Um, tell yourself, I'm going to do two rows for right now or three rows and give yourself a break. Don't feel like you have to spend hours and hours. So just do a little bit at a time because um, your paper is quite a bit larger. Your paper is quite a bit bigger. So it's going to take you a little bit longer to do your assignment, but it looks really great and it's so worth the time and it is so stunning when you're all done. So please um, take your time.